Hello everybody, today is day 183 and I'm reading from 2 Kings chapter 1 through 4. It is loaded with miracles and signs and wonders and the prophet Elijah and Elisha. And these chapters show the incredible, awesome God working through common and ordinary people. God is planning to take Elijah up. Now that's an interesting way of phrasing it, but to take Elijah up. Elisha would not leave Elijah's side and he's persistent. He's, he's determined to stick with him as if he all himself identifies that some benefit's going to come from his connectedness uh, with this man of God. Uh, others seem to be aware of Elijah's leaving. Now, they don't know how this is going to happen, but obviously uh, Elijah knew that something was going to transpire and had hinted around to the others that he would soon be gone. Well, we have the miracle of the water parting. Elijah takes the mantle. He slaps it on the water, the water separates, and both Elijah and Elisha walk across, uh, crossing between the waters. Elisha makes a request. He says to Elijah, I want a double portion of the spirit that is upon you uh, to fall upon me. Elijah says to Elisha, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so. And from that moment, he obviously is clinging to Elijah, but rather quickly it says, and as they continued to walk and to talk, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and it separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. What an incredible, awesome experience that must have been. It went right between them. And so you got these this fire of uh, chariots and horses and a whirlwind snatching Elijah out of this world and taking him up into heaven. Now, so Elisha saw him no more, the Bible says. And this is a symbol, a type, a shadow of the picture of the rapture of God's church the remnant be ta being taken up. This is similar to what Jesus speaks about. The New Testament tells that you and I will experience that without warning, that's why Jesus said to be watchful. And this is what Elisha did. He was watching and wouldn't take his eyes off of Elijah. You and I are looking to Jesus. We don't know when it's going to be, but he did speak about the two will be together. One will be taken, the other left. And here it says, and without warning, we're going to experience this very same in the twinkling of an eye, just like that. Uh, as Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind, so you and I are going to be snatched out of this world. Now, Elisha carries from this point on the miracle anointing. This is what the Bible says, the spirit of Elijah rest on Elisha. And this is, uh, they, it was evidence. They saw this. Um, Elisha takes that mantle, he slaps the water, the water separate, and those observing saints see there the spirit of Elijah is now upon Elijah. Another interesting scripture is First uh, Kings chapter 3 in the 15th verse. I never really noted this before, but this is fascinating. Elisha has uh, been asked for direction from God, uh, a word of direction for decision uh, by the king. And Elisha requests an interesting thing. He, he requests for a musician to come, to come and play music. And it says that then it happened as the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he prophesied. Now, this is the first connection I've ever seen where God uses music, but it's an indication because we see this even in David with Saul. Saul's unclean spirits, evil spirits were driven out when David would play uh, the harp. And so there's some connection here of worship and musicians playing and the activation of gifts and the, uh, and the spirit of prophecy. I love the widow who has creditors coming. Um, she has no more money. They're going to take her sons into slavery. Uh, she goes to Elisha. He asks, uh, uh, what uh, do you have? And she says, nothing but a jar of oil. I like that phrase, nothing but a jar of oil. This is what we find all through these passages of scripture. When Elijah goes up to pray for rain, he prays, sends his servant to go look and comes back, I don't see anything. He prays again, goes look, nothing. Finally, the servant goes and says, oh, I, I see, well, I see something, it's, 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 it, but it's just the, the cloud the size of a man's hand. And Elijah said, that's all you need. Now, go tell 
down, the floodwaters are coming. And it seems like this, uh, this uh, God specializes in that, those limiting factors, uh, nothing left but a, the, the final meal. Remember the other woman, widow who said that her and her son were going to die. But God specializes. So what does Elijah, Elisha say? Borrow some vessels from all of your neighbors and make sure they're empty. And don't get just a few of them. Get a lot of them. And, and he gave specific instructions about uh, going in, shutting the door, and, and taking that vessel that's filled with oil and, and begin filling all of them. And it took faith and it took obedience and it took action. And then he said, go sell that oil and pay your debt. And when she had filled all of the vessels, the oil ceased uh, to flow. And I think this is God. He specializes this. Uh, God, these are, these are just incredible miracles, but it's certainly inter in indications for you and I that we could be living at a higher level than we currently are. Uh, the Elisha's uh, raises the, the Shumanite's uh, son, the miracle of conception, uh, Elijah's, uh, his, his fight of faith, even raising that son, uh, the miracle of multiplying the loaves. All of this is indications of God's incredible, awesome power and desire to network and partner with us in the supernatural.